What's up everybody, it's Victon here with another Path of Exile build guide. Today we're going to be going over a high-end in-game build and a cultist self-curse wander using Kinetic Blast. This is by no means revolutionary, a lot of people are doing this build right now, but this guide is going to be my take on the build. I actually made this character only three days ago and I'm already at level 97. This build absolutely is the best build out there for farming five-way legion emblems, and doing those can get you some decent currency returns, but more importantly get you an insane amount of XP. For me, this has been the craziest build of the league so far, as is to be expected with the price tag of the build, which we're going to go over shortly. But let me tell you, from my personal experience, I've played several different styles of self curse builds or other similar playstyle builds like Fireblade Vortex Explosions, and this so far has been the most fun for me and also possibly the most powerful. The simple fact that you are ranged ups your clear speed and survivability quite a bit in maps even more so than the already incredibly fast map clear speeds of the ever so popular Blade Vortex versions. Also in this guide, I'm going to go over a few currency making strats that I use while playing this build that has made me some serious currency, so stick around to the end for that as well. Before we get into this, if you end up enjoying the guide, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. I have tons of build guides videos and general tips and tricks videos for Path of Exile, so definitely go check out those if you're interested. Also check out my Patreon linked below if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting a few extra juicy benefits along the way. With that being said, I do want to preface this guide with two things. Number one, this isn't going to be the typical build guide that I usually put out because anyone interested in building this character specifically likely already has an in-game character and has amassed a decent amount of currency. That is of course because number two, this build is 100% requiring a headhunter. Now I know some of you guys are going to go ahead and check out right there and that's totally fine, I just wanted to be transparent. Do note though that we're going to go over a full build cost and even some budget options here in a bit and in general I'd say that after the headhunter it is one of the cheaper super in-game mega DPS and clear speed builds. So overall I'd give this build an S rank. It has some of the highest clear speed in the game for an all can go strategy on maps which I personally have been farming legions with and it's absolutely insane for those. It can farm four and a half lines of loot in five ways, which is going to be the best XP in the game all the way up to 100 super, super easily. And it can most certainly do 100% delirium, incredibly juiced tier 16 maps. The only reason it is not an S plus rank is because general bossing like Cyrus, you simply just can't do at all with this build because it relies on headhunter buffs, which you're only getting in maps. But outside of Cyrus, Shaper, Uber Elder, the Maven fights, all those bosses, it absolutely demolishes the rest of the game. For survivability, I'd give it an A+. Again, once you're in maps and you have your head under buffs, you are beyond unkillable. Sometimes you can reach upwards of 150 plus thousand energy shields, so literally immortal. However, once you just start maps, and more specifically those 100% delirium juice maps, killing those first few packs to get your buffs rolling can be a bit sketchy and tricky, but we'll go over that later. For damage, I'm going to give this an S rank. Same issue here though, your damage really only comes online when you get your headhunter buffs, but once you have those, your damage is in the hundreds of millions of DPS, and you literally one-shot everything, including bosses. Even one-shot legion bosses or breachstone bosses, it doesn't matter they actually get one shot. For build viability, this is 100% a softcore trade leak build only. Even though you can easily hit 100 with this build and never die, there's always the chance that before you slurp up some of those juicy headhunter buffs, you could get killed by something random. So I just wouldn't suggest it for hardcore. And for solo self found, there's just way too many uniques required to make this work, mainly of course because of headhunter. These builds are typically seen as only softcore trade league friendly builds, so no news here. But yeah, that was a brief overview of the build. Let's go ahead and hop into Path of Building, where we're going to go over the skill tree, the gym links, and lastly, the gear. All right, so we are in Path of Building here. Now, what I want to mention here real quick is I'm not going to go super in-depth here, uh, because again, I think a lot of you guys that are actually going to try and build this are probably pretty experienced. Uh, so just go ahead and throw this into your Path of Building, and I'll just kind of mention some quick things before we actually move into the game. And I'm going to do some gameplay footage to actually guy show you guys some of the play style that I do along with a five-way map and kind of show you guys how I do that map. So one of the big things to note here is we do get a five passive 
uh, voices, which are not too bad. They're only, I think they're like 4.7 exalt right now, so not too bad, but we do need this. The most important thing about this build is, of course, self-cursing yourself, right? So we want at least 175% curse effectiveness on your temporal chains. And how we do that is by getting a lot of curse effectiveness right over here, and of course by being an occultist. So on your medium passives, do try and copy exactly what I have here. There's one other thing that you could do. Uh, I'll just go over this real, real quick. So whispers of death and dark discourse on a six passive is what you want for here. If you don't get that, you can actually do a 35% uh, effect of the small cluster nodes here and you can drop one of these two here uh, i'm pretty sure you go with you still go with dark discourse and you can drop whisper whisper of death uh, i personally would just go ahead and get dark discourse and whispers of death that's the easier one and the cheaper one of the medium clusters to go ahead and get so do that get three of these we're going to pick up three of those uh, and we're also, like I mentioned, we're headhunter. So real quick, we just mentioned that we get three inspired learnings. We're trying to stack as many buffs as we can that we're stealing from rare monsters as possible. Sometimes I have upwards of, well, I think, typically I'm around 150 buffs when I'm doing these big juiced maps. And I've gotten upwards of 200 buffs uh, in some of these Legion encounters. It's so much buffs. You can actually crash your entire computer because you have so many buffs. It doesn't happen all the time, but you can very occasionally do that, uh, which is pretty insane. So on the skill tree here, we are a wander as well. So we're getting some wand nodes up here. We're getting some wand nodes over here. We're getting lots of crit multi nodes. Uh, we're getting the power charges here. <clears throat> And then just making sure that we're filling up for the inspired learning, you need four of these notables. So one, two, three, four. <clears throat> so we do that. And we do that for each one of these over here. So just more multi over here. Uh, we are going cold conversion with this. So we do want to get these nodes right here to convert our physical damage to cold. So get those to convert that. This is actually your last points of the build right here. So it's what, one, two, three, four, five. So from level 95 on, I would get these nodes right here. Just FYI. Um, moving over here, let's see what else we have. We have the Watcher's Eye. This is quite important as well. The only stat here that you actually care about is the physical damage converted to cold damage while affected by hatred. Uh, these are actually too expensive. I think I purchased mine for about four exalts, so really not too bad, and you don't need a second stat on it. If you want to get something, I spend a little bit more currency, you can, uh, but you don't have to. I'm not sure about the prices as they raise, like once start these build guides start coming out for multiple people, uh, but when I purchased this, it was about four exalts, maybe like four and a half, and uh, wasn't too bad. That's really it for the skill tree. The skill tree is very, very basic. Uh, just make sure you guys follow this exactly. Uh, we do wanna make sure we're picking up uh, as much curse effectiveness as possible, so make sure you get these, but the same concept applies to everywhere. It's just making sure you get your one, your two, your three, your four, and on this one, we actually have five. So nothing too crazy about the skill tree. Uh, as far as going occultist, uh, very important here because we are going to be getting a couple different things. Uh, one of the things that is very important is this right here. Um, you can apply additional curse. We are applying, in my build specifically, we're applying three curses. I know that you can get even more curses than that if you want, uh, but we are applying temporal chains. We are applying elemental weakness and frostbite. Those are our three curses that we're gonna be using with the build that I have been running. Uh, after that, we, we do get this, which is your hexes can affect uh, hexproof enemies, and really, really big, especially for the 100% delirium maps and even the five ways is cursed enemies you kill have a 40% chance to explode during a quarter of their life as chaos damage. So just a whole bunch of explosions for those monsters that have a really, really high HP. Uh, when you kill them, they explode and do a lot of damage to the ones nearby them. So it's kind of like the explode chests, but on steroids. So very, very good note right there. Um, this is a, another solid node, which is going to get you a whole bunch of power charges and a bunch of damage and area of effect. Uh, now, for our last node here, though, you have a couple options. You can either go Vial of Bastions or v Void Beacon. Uh, Vial of Bastions is your defensive option, which is just going to basically get you stun immunity. Or you can go Void Beacon, which is going to get some cold resist shredding uh, for your skills. So you do a little bit more damage. And you guys see over here, by the way, our, our damage is very low. Don't worry about that at all. Um, once you have all your headhunter buffs, again, that, that goes into the millions and millions and then hundreds of millions. So don't worry about the damage over there being low. So that's the skill tree. That's the ascendancy. Let's go ahead and move on to the skills. Again, nothing too crazy here. 
Uh, I'm just going to kind of walk through them just so you can see if there's anything crazy. Um, one thing to note is we are using clarity here, but we're not using the actual skill of clarity. As you can see, if we use that, we have no reserve mana, right? We're only using a vol clarity for the vol actual aspect of clarity. Uh, one good thing about this build is because we have so much curse effect and we're cursing ourselves specifically with temp chains which we'll go over in the item section uh, but because we're cursing ourselves with temp chains the buffs on us expire a lot slower uh, and that is very very good for things like vol clarity so typically you get vol clarity only 10 seconds right it's a base duration as you can see here of 9.9 .9 seconds however because things expire so slow on us you actually get this vol clarity buff for a significant amount of time i think it's like 30 plus seconds that you actually get this buff for same thing with your flasks actually you get to use your flask and it just takes forever for them to take down so very very good um, also make sure when you guys are following this that you're also paying attention to the variance over here. So for example, I have di uh, Anomalous Second Wind. Um, and some of these are not 100% optimized. I'll have to go through and I'll look, but uh, there might be one or two options that are better. Um, but Anomalous, we definitely want a 20% on that. Uh, Anomalous Second Wind is, is quite good. Divergent Dash, again, quite good. So that grants phasing for two seconds again that expires really really slow so if you dash you actually have phasing for like 10 to 12 seconds i think uh so very very good every time you dash you get phasing for a really long time not just that two seconds very very long time so it's pretty good uh moving on to hatred we have hatred per, uh, precision and we have we do have an enlightened four if you go down to an enlightened three you can make it work uh you're only gonna have 79 mana which is not the best. I'm just trying to get as much mana as possible. So in the initial stage of that map, you can spam your kinetic blast as much as possible. Once you kill a few monsters, you'll have that vault clarity and you'll be able to spam for the rest of your life. But in that initial like five to 10 seconds of the map, that's all. That's where pretty much everything is going to happen. You're either going to go crazy mode and turn into god mode or you're going to struggle bus a little bit so the best thing for us to do in our, our skills over here in our passive tree is try and solve that five seconds of getting those initial buffs and that's one of them it's just getting a little bit more mana so but again you can do enlightened level three and it'd be just fine so moving on to temp chains uh, i would suggest you guys get the highest level temp chains as possible so i actually have 20 21 would be better just because we have so much curse effect in our build it's very very good uh in our helmet we actually have temporal chains blasphemy enlighten i'm just living up an enlighten and a portal you don't actually need the enlighten here um and then i have just a portal in there as well you can actually put a what might be better is to put an enhance in here. That would actually be pretty good because then you could get a, a portal that goes really, really quick and then also uh, makes your temporal chains more effective as well. So I, probably an enhance here would be better. And instead of the align, I just haven't messed with that. Let's just go ahead and throw that in there for you guys. Enhance, very good. Um, okay, cool. So moving on to Kinetic Blast. This is obviously our main skill. We have Kinetic Blast, Inspiration, Greater Multiple Projectiles. Do note here that I don't even have Awakened Gems outside of uh, Awakened Fork and Added Cold. So I don't have Awakened GMP. I don't have Awakened Elemental Damage. Uh, and I'm still like just destroying the entire game. So if I had those, I'd just do even more damage. Uh, so very, very good. But this is your, your general setup here. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have Awakened Added Cold. Apologies. And I have Divergent uh added cold uh because we're, we're not getting awake and i apologize it, it is very important to get the divergent version of added cold as you can see here it's 20 percent of physical damage converted to cold damage so that's going to get that last bit of your physical converted to cold uh you have your watcher's eye right so that gives you up to 40 percent, and you have 20 percent here and then there's a little bit on the tree as well so very very important that you have added cold divergent very very important um, and the, the rest is kind of whatever you want to do. Inspiration, uh, Divergent. This is, again, just to help out with that first initial five, six seconds of the map, getting your, uh, your buffs going. Divergent just makes it have reduced mana cost, and Kinetic Blast does cost a little bit of mana. Um, 
So getting Divergent does help with inspiration. So moving on to the most important link in your entire setup is your gloves. This is how we are self-cursing ourselves. We're cursing ourselves with temp chains. Again, you want a very high level one uh, and also the quality as high as possible. 2123 is ideal uh, because that's gonna give you the most, most curse effect. And again, you want the 175% curse effect to get the full effect of all of these headhunter buffs lasting as long as possible for you. Uh, I have on here Herald of Thunder and hex touch so this is actually how we're cursing ourselves so i'll go over the gloves real quick for you guys uh, this is how we're actually able to curse ourselves as you can see right here hexes applied by socketed curse skills are reflected back at you so we have herald of thunder which is constantly shooting little lightning bolts out at everybody and that is an area of effect damage so when that actually hits the ground it can hit you as well and it self curses back that temporal chains on you uh, so that's how we are self cursing ourselves with temporal chains um, and then the increased duration there is, again, just to make it last longer. The Herald of Thunder is going to last longer. Uh, not too bad. It's not required at all, but uh, it, it does help a little bit. So this setup is very, very important. The most, of course, being Hex Tush and Herald of Thunder. Now, one thing that you could do, which is kind of interesting, um, is you could have an Awakened Hex Tush right here. So you get plus one curse. And on your items, this is like a super in-game thing that you could do. Uh, we do have, as you can see here, a frostbite on hit for one of our rings. But our second ring, if we got a plus one curse additional, so four curses, we can actually get a ring that has assassin's mark on hit for rare and unique enemies. That would be insane. The damage on that would just be insane. So that is a another option if you are able to get awakened hex touch. Uh, definitely consider that. Moving on, we do, we do have, like I said, Elemental Weakness on our gloves. That is the Implicit by the Corruption. And we have Frostbite on our ring. So that kind of leads us into our next section here. Let's go ahead and go over our items. So we have a very basic physical damage wand here with as much physical damage as possible, with as much attack speed as possible, with as much crit and crit multi as possible. Uh, this wand right here is actually only an 18 exalt wand. Uh, surprisingly, it's about 400 DPS. There are much better wands than I have that just go all the way up to 100x and, and then a mirror plus. Um, I'm getting away with this no problem with 18x. I started out with a 10x wand and I think it had 350 damage, uh, physical damage, and I was just fine. I can be, I actually barely tell the difference between that wand and this wand. Uh, sure, this is more, but you, you're totally fine. I feel like you could even do um, some of these really, really cheap wands. Let's actually just look here. Uh, any slot weapon one. Where is the wand? Wand. Uh, I think, like, for example, the Twizzle, right? Twizzle. I bet you could use this and probably be okay. Uh, and it's like, what, one chaos? So I, I bet you could use a Twizzle and be just fine. You do so much damage uh, once you get your buffs going. Obviously, the better your wand is, the easier it is to get those initial buffs. So like, I wouldn't do a Twizzle in a 100% Delirious map, but honestly, you could probably use a Twizzle, no problem, and just like regular mapping if you're alking and going and farming content you just want to do it super super quick like i said i do legion farming in the new vestir zone uh, i make a lot of currency doing that because i run my five ways as well uh, from that i could probably throw a twizzle in there and still feel like a god and that's 15 exalts less so that's an option uh, for my shield here i actually have a five chaos shield wow uh, so very, very good. The only big thing here is that 15% effect of your curses. Uh, I literally searched for that and high life, and I got the shield for five chaos. What you could do here is also get cold damage on it. So you could get like 60, 80% cold damage, and that would be very, very good. Uh, so that's another option. So this is this weapon here, or this uh, shield here is in no means like in-game version. Uh, it's five chaos. Um, so moving on to our helmet, very, very important here though, is we want that 30% increased temporal chain curse effect. If you're not able to get it on a crown of the inward eye, you absolutely need it on some other item. You cannot skip this enchant on the helmet. So if you can't get it on crown of the inward eye, just search on the trade website and get any helmet that has temporal chains curse effect. I would at least suggest you try and get something on maybe like a Huber circlet for the energy shield. Um, but the best, in my opinion, is this crown of the inward eye, which is very, very good. The transfiguration of soul, body, and mind. And then it's got a bunch of life, mana, and global energy shield. So pretty, pretty solid. 
For the body armor, I do have a kind of crazy body armor here. I'll just show you what the most powerful stats on it to have are, and then you can kind of uh, go about crafting this yourself or uh, buying it however you want to do it. If there is interest, uh, let me know in the comments and I can do a crafting video for some of this stuff, but uh, I don't want to include it in this because it would just take a, a really long time for the video. So let me know if you guys are interested in a crafting video. Uh, but the most important two stats on here are enemies you kill explode. Uh, dealing This 5% is actually the elevated mod from uh, Maven, so it's usually 3%. And the, the second one is the attack's critical strike chance. So kinetic blast is an attack. As much attack uh, critical strike chance as possible is the best. Uh, so very, very good on that. And that's, again, only one. it only matters for that first 10 seconds in the map because once you have a bunch of headhunter buffs, you're at 100% crit chance for the rest of the map, and it doesn't even matter. But very, very good. And then that additional curse is also very solid. If you want to get the frostbite on hit or the elemental weakness on hit, uh, that would be good. I would say elemental weakness on hit is more important than frostbite because not only are you doing a lot of cold damage, you are also doing a lot of lightning damage. So also very important. Uh, if you don't have curse on this, go ahead and drop frostbite on your ring instead. And then of course, just you know as much life and resistances on there as you need. So gloves, uh, this again, the shackles of the wretched are required for this build. Uh, with that hex is applied to you, what is not required, although very highly recommended, is that uh, implicit curse and means with elemental weakness on hit. Moving on to our boots, this is also required for the build. Uh, basically what this does is since you are cursing yourself with temporal chains, it's typically going to make you very slow. You're literally going to be running like this and it's awful. So what you do to, to, to prevent that is you go ahead and get uh, these boots, which action speed cannot be modified below their base value. So you will always at least have normal run speed. Uh, so very, very good. And it also gives you the unwavering stance there. Uh, now, one big thing here though is to try and get either a corrupted pair that have 10% move speed or an enchanted version that have 10% move speed. I have not done that yet myself. I just have the chance to dodge hits, which is not the best. You definitely want move speed on there if you can. One method that I have been doing that I'll go ahead and let you guys know that you might like is when I full clear really big maps, uh, I typically do not loot as I'm going through the map because you want to kill everything because you don't want your headhunter buffs to go away, right? So I kill the entire map and then I loot after the map. One thing that you can do is keep in your inventory a pair of seven league steps. Those are the 50% increased movement speed boots. Um, and in that I have phase run linked to second win link to increased duration and I put that on my left click So I'm just zooming around the map and picking up all the currency Because uh, if you don't have that and you just have the Titan Greaves and you have very low move speed It is a little rough. So that's just one thing that you guys can do if you guys want to min max I guess uh, so moving on to and one thing I would also mention here is I would purchase guys a pair for that has that 200 maximum life it can go all the way up to 200 maximum life. I literally bought it for 10 chaos uh, and I'm trying to cor corrupt it, not corrupt. I'm trying to enchant it myself for that move speed. Uh, if you got a pair of move speed boots with the 200, that would be so expensive, um, which you can do if you want. Uh, but I would suggest buying a super cheap pair and trying to corrupt it yourself or trying to enchant it yourself and remember through the lab you can actually get a whole bunch of tries with the enchant if you use a twice enchanted which is the prophecy and also if you use the gift of the goddess which is a um the little currency that you use to get into the lab and it actually gives you i think it gives you with using those two things up to nine tries per lab to get that move speed enchant so actually not too bad however don't do that on this build because you can't kill anything on this build remember how i said there's no single target without headhunter buffs same thing for lab do not do this on, on your lab do that on like a, a different character and then move it over to this so amulet again required as you can kind of see the trend here everything's basically required we want to allocate hex master as our anoint again that's required um yeah, but yeah other than that it's a pretty basic item i got an absolute perfect rolled one with hex master already on it for 1x not too bad moving on to the rings uh, I do have decent rings here. There are some things that I could do to them. Basically on your rings, you wanna get as much elemental resist as possible uh, with a little bit of elemental damage. So the best um, base to get this on is an opal ring. As you can see here, I have two opal rings for that elemental damage. 
uh, and as much elemental resistance as possible because we have a lot of items that have no elemental resistances on them. So you're getting them mainly from your rings here. Uh, I could do on this one, I could actually augment life. Uh, basically what I would do is I could remove defense so that 10 evasion re rating, I would have removed that and then augment life until I get some life on there. And that would be a pretty solid ring. Um, moving on to my second ring, this is very important, Rabbi. Right? If you have the body armor that has that plus one to curse, you can get a ring with frostbite on hit. So you would get the frostbite on hit, and then you would get as much resistance as possible and as much elemental damage as possible. And then I have a little bit of life on here as well, which I could harvest craft to get a little bit more life. And then at that point, I would also put on uh, one more stat, but uh, this is just fine for me right now. Like I said, I'm destroying the entire content uh, with this gear setup, and it's not even min-maxed. So. But that's how you could min-max that if you wanted to. And the most important item in the game for this build um, is, of course, the Headhunter. Uh, with this, uh, it is kind of important to note that um, on your amulet and your belt, you do want to use intrinsic catalysts, which up the attribute modifiers, um, and you want as much... Basically, I think the one that we need the most is strength. Yeah, so we're very short on strength here, but using attribute um, catalysts on both your belt and your amulet does get uh, that up to the requirement that you need. So you don't actually have to get it on the tree or you don't have to get it on your rings or something like that. So just one little, one little tip there. Now, your flasks are also very, very important. Uh, I would get the exact flask setup that I have here, and there is one extra flask that we'll talk about uh, that is very interesting that I have not tried, but I'll let you guys, let me see if I have it on the other screen. I do, so I'll pull that over in a second. Um, so, Dying Sun, very, very important. It's gonna give you some extra projectiles, extra area of effect, very, very good. Uh, and it also gives you less fire damage taken and some fire resist. And because we have, uh, we're kind of short on our resists over here, it's actually helping, let's see what we are without these. So we're uncapped on cold resist, which is actually the next one. So these kind of help you with your resistances as well, which kind of sketchy, but it's not too bad. Uh, the next one we have taste of hate, which is helping with your cold resistances, uh, cold, less cold damage taken, which is pretty nice. And uh, the big one here though is 20% physical damage as extra cold damage during effect. So very, very good for damage increase. And that's kind of what we're going here with almost all these flasks is damage increase. Nothing that has to do with defense. Uh, the ample diamond flask of staunching, you do want something with bleed removal. You don't have to have it because we do have corrupting blood cannot be afflicted on you on one of your jewels. Uh, but it is pr still pretty good to go ahead and get bleeding on here uh, if you can. Now, one thing that I would mention, instead of this flask here, you can actually go with a replica. No, not a wand. Let's do flask. Not weapon one either, any slot, flask, replica. A replica, Rumi's concoction. Very interesting here. So 50% chance to block attacks, 50% or 30% chance to block spells. However, Two things. One, it's a very short duration, 1.2 seconds, uh, which is negated by the fact that we have very slow buff. Um, it's It takes a lot longer for your buffs to, to go away, right? So that 1.2 seconds is actually more like 10 seconds. So not bad at all. That's totally fine. And the other issue on this flask is petrified during flask effect. So basically you can't move. That's pretty bad, right? However, we actually have Combs Roots where we can't be slowed past our, um, past our base value. Uh, so that is completely negated and you only get the benefits. So 50% chance to block attack, 30% chance to block spell. Very, very good. Not too bad at all. Uh, so you could maybe replace this Diamond Flask with this Rumi's Concoction if you wanted to. Um, for I would maybe do that if you're doing like the 100% Delirium Super Juice maps. That could be a pretty interesting swap right there. Uh, but you don't need it for any other content, like just regular mapping. You don't need that. Um, moving on, the Cinder Swallow. Very, very good here. Uh, it's just a very great flask in general. It's going to give you lots of life, mana, energy shield, recover on kill. We have so much life and so much energy shield when we have our buffs that that just it, it scales very, very well. We have critical strike chance as the craft there. Um, and also, it's interesting to know that enemies ignited by you take 10% increased damage. And we do a lot of fire damage as well. Uh, so they will be taking uh, Ignite Chance, so they will be taking that extra 10% damage as well, which is a more multiplier, so uh, very, very good. And then we have this, uh, the replica one right here. So 
Very, very good. Uh, moving on to our clusters. I think we already talked about those. We talked about the Watcher's Eye, which is, again, that 40% physical damage converted to cold damage, which is required to get the 100% the uh, conversion, or close to 100% conversion. Won't be at 100. Uh, now, this is another good thing to mention here. This only cost me an Exalt, which is not too bad, but Mantra of Flames with Headhunter buffs is insane. Remember how I mentioned that you can get up to 200 Headhunter buffs, and typically around like 70 you'll have? So adds fire damage uh, to attacks per buff you have on you. If you have 100 buffs on you, you get all of those stacks of Mantra of Flames. And you get so much damage. It's actually crazy. And then Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you, so you don't die to Corrupted Blood. So pretty, pretty good option here. And like I said, I have that five passive voices, and it's only about 5x, so not too bad. I think the Inspired Learnings are about 2x each. Uh, you don't have to have all of these. You can just get them as you build your character. It's totally fine. Um... And I think that's it, actually, for uh, the items, for the skill, and for the tree. Um, let's go ahead and hop in game here. And basically what I want to do is go ahead and show you guys uh, a map. I'm going to do two things. I want to show you guys a map, and I want to kind of show you guys a five-way. Uh, but I guess I can say it right now, that's basically the build. If you guys want to go ahead and head out and just start banging it out yourself and enjoying the build, feel free. If you guys want to stick around, I'm probably going to do another, you know, six, seven minutes of uh, mapping to kind of show you guys the play style. So stick around if you want to check that out. So like I said earlier, um, I do five ways on this build a lot, which is these right here. Let's go over to our stash. Uh, let's go over to our fragments. You see these things right here, right? So these emblems. And when I do that, I get an insane amount of XP and a pretty good, decent uh, return of currency as well. These are typically relatively... I guess they're not too bad, actually, this league. They're usually more. Um, but running this is probably about 60 to 70 chaos worth per single run. Uh, and you're usually getting about maybe one and a half to two exalts back in profit. Um not profit overall so you're probably making it about one and a half exalts a map uh, so not the best definitely not the best um but it gives a crap ton of xp too so it's just a really good kind of combination so in order to do this i wanted to self farm these myself and in order to do that i went over to the near new Vestir zone over here and they have a lot of legion stuff uh, so with that i have each legion area has an additional war horde so a bunch of splinters uh, and then this is the big one. So timeless splinters dropped by legion monsters and areas have 1% chance to drop as a timeless emblem instead. So I have actually had a ton of times where I've gotten just the best emblem. What is it? The green one? That's the most expensive one. I think I've had three or four of those drop just in the past day. That saves you so much currency. And if you're doing this for profit, that's pretty good for profit too. Um, going back over here. We have the last thing here is just uh, area contains three sergeants, always have rewards. So again, just more splinters, more, more, more splinters. Uh, and then I'm going to be eventually going over into the metamorph stuff. Uh, that's done really, or I'm sorry, the abyss stuff that doesn't really affect what we're doing here. So the more important thing about the new steer strategy is, and again, this is a, kind of like I was mentioning that currency making strategy. So I could kind of mention to you guys about how I'm playing this build. Uh, and also making some currency on this this character. So as you can see, I have Platinum Nuva Steer Watchstones for all of these. And on it, I have rolled Legion Encounters, have an increased chance to have a both Marketh Army and a Templar Army. Those are the two most expensive splinters. So we're getting as much chance as possible for those exp expensive splinters to drop. And I have that on all of them. I have Tier 1 rolls on all of these. Uh, and then I'm also doing just random sex. I'm just throwing on... Uh, a random awakened sex and it's just for a little bit more quality quantity i'm sorry uh, and we are doing a one two three we are doing i think i put this in here already yep a legion scarab for every single run let's see how much these cost so 20 chaos and then the map uh, i literally just alk it and go very very cheap uh, so overall, I would say this map cost me 30 chaos to run, okay? 30 chaos to run. And I'm typically getting, a, again, about maybe an exalt and a half to two exalts in profit um, per, I would say probably more close to like an exalt profit per map. And these are so quick. You can run these super, super quick. It's kind of annoying to buy the winged league scarabs, the winged legion scarabs. So that actually takes probably more time to buy these things than actually run the map, which is kind of feels bad but uh so let's go ahead and go into this map and i'll show you how you actually play this build it's actually super super simple you just kind of run in circles and you, you turn into a turret uh which is actually pretty cool and you can see there's not much going on here with the skills like i have portal on most of my skills uh kinetic blast 
dash, which is going to get me that uh, phasing. And then I have fall clarity. I use that on cooldown. So let's go ahead. We're going to start and we're going to immediately get a couple buffs. One thing that's really, really good for this build is if you can get a ritual going as soon as possible, it's very, very good. Um, because they have a lot of rare monsters in these things, which gets you a lot of your buffs. So we're just already cruising with 14 uh, buffs. Let's go ahead and find a legion over here. Where are you, sir? Watch this. So we're going to pop it. Our screen absolutely explodes. And we are now a big boy. And there's a general right there. Let's just make sure we clear everything. You can hear... You can hear the best uh, headhunter buff steal ever, the, the race car one. So it looks like we cleared everything. It's gonna pop and everything's immediately dead. I mean, as you guys can tell, it's just insane. And we're full clearing this, this map in like, you know, absolutely no time at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Let's go ahead and clear as we go. There should be at least three legions um, spawn here where's the boss basically phased him already let's go out let's go ahead and do this ritual here's turret mode i love it so you just stand still and you spin in circles and everything just absolutely gets destroyed lamau so very very good back to the boss he's still phased okay come on brother and he's dead see incredible damage uh, let's find the Legion. Actually, we can go ahead and finish this altar. Should be the last altar. And that's another, actually, fantastic. Good thing to kind of bring up to you guys. Uh, with this build, you're killing so many monsters, especially on five ways. Uh, that you actually, it's a very good strategy to put the incubators on your items. So I always have, like, these, you can see the six link one. Oop, let's keep going. The, the six link one, or... Uh, the time lost one which you can get headhunters with and badge of the brotherhoods all that good stuff uh, with those incubators so because you're doing so many five ways you're gonna have literally a gazillion incubators use them yourself if you want to sell them that's totally fine uh, but i would suggest popping some on yourself just because you kill so many monsters same thing with the five way uh, because you kill so many i think it's like seven thousand monsters a map uh, which is absolutely insane. Uh, you can actually do... Map's done, by the way. That's how, how fast we just cleared that map. And there's just so much loot ground on the ground. Uh, because there's so many monsters that you're killing per map with these five ways, you can actually uh, level your gems up very, very well as well in your offhand. So I would suggest maybe leveling up, you know, some empowers. Um, any gem that sells really well as a corrupted level 21 gym without quality so for example hatreds right you can sell a hatred uh level 21 zero percent quality for like 70 chaos uh so very very good so i typically have hatreds uh, that's the cheapest one to do because you can just purchase them from the vendor right i can go to act three and purchase it from the vendor for like an alteration super super easy so as you can see here right so this popped out a bunch of templar splinters that's because we have that watchstone so very very good um or you could do you know the multi-strike one thing that i do want to mention is ah, perfect example perfect example sometimes you don't see ah, sometimes you don't see the bosses because you your butt is the entire screen and you literally can't see things uh typically what i do in that case is most likely if you guys are building this you have another character i'm gonna go ahead and pop out i'm gonna put up a portal here I'm gonna go into my, I'm not even gonna mess with it. I don't wanna lose XP. So I just pop in, go to my other character real quick, and then I'm gonna go kill that dude. Because at this point, I have no buffs, right? Uh, mainly because I've been chatting with you guys. Typically, if I'm playing by myself or, or with the party, right, uh, I'm paying a little bit more attention and I'm able to kill that boss. But in the off chance that I'm not paying attention, I just pop onto another character uh, and then I go kill this boss here real quick. And it's usually the generals, doesn't happen often. Um, but that's just kind of like a side tip for you guys. I wouldn't even mess with attempting the bosses like this. Like, see how easy that was on this character? Um, that would absolutely not happen on my other character. I, I would have probably died. Because you have literally no damage once you when you have no buffs. So, very, very bad. Uh, let's go ahead and hop back in. I'm not going to loot. I'm going to actually... Actually, I'm going to loot. I'm just going to edit the video. I'll be right back. All right, and we're back with the magic of editing. I, I didn't want to make you guys watch me loot all that. 
Um, so here's what we got though. We will go over kind of what I got from this map. We actually had a really good map return. Uh, I, I popped those three, um, the six link incubations, right? So I got these three divines right here. Uh, we got 68 timeless Templars, which is actually 28 chaos. Um, let's see here. Where's, I got some yellow ones somewhere. Yeah, I got 27 of the yellow ones, which is another nine chaos. A whole bunch of uh, incubators that would sell to actual chaos. And then also, most importantly, I got an Azanath Gentle Touch. Wow. So two exalts for that, not too bad. And we actually did have one splinter or one full emblem drop as well. So pretty good, definitely a good run. Um, let's go ahead and go back to town and then I will show you guys the five way. So let's go do that. Cause that's where the juice is. That's where it is super, super fun. Uh, so let's just go ahead and pop all this in here. I'll mess with it later. Uh, I guess I can mention this too, Culling Strike. So why I have Culling Strike while we're getting this set up. Uh, if you're party playing with somebody else that has Headhunter, um, in the beginning of a map, like I'm doing 100% Delirium with my map partner, uh, he has Headhunter and a very good build. So it's hard to get kills and us splitting the kills. And I need the kills immediately when the map starts. I actually throw in Culling Strike instead of the Divergent Cold uh, just to get a few uh, buffs immediately. And then I go ahead and pop that back in. It's just to get the, the immediate buffs going. And then once you're good, you start rolling. All right, so let's do the five way. This is what this build absolutely excels at. And in my opinion, kind of why you make this build because of the five way. So let's go ahead and go into it. Uh, it is incredibly fun uh, to do and you get so much XP doing it. I'm gonna probably do, this is probably gonna be my first level 100 character and I'm gonna do it using this method right here. So first few phases, we're, we're just kind of going around getting as many buffs as possible. Um, nothing crazy here. What do we got? We only got 19 buffs. Again, nothing crazy. Let's see what our damage is. Not too bad for a first round. Sometimes your damage is not the best on the first round. Uh, but actually it's interesting to mention is that you actually get diminishing returns uh, for this. So you'll see, I hate that guy. He's a wiener. He, he goes into, uh, you can't do damage mode to him, which is pretty rough. Uh, so not the best. So first two rounds, we you do want to try and clear all the bosses. If you can't, it's not honestly a big deal. You just go ahead and move on to the next one. After this, it's going to jump up in uh, speed significantly. But we're getting the most amount of loot right now by killing these initial bosses. Uh, if, it, if the loot isn't the matter to you, if you just want XP, uh, skip doing this part right here. You, you actually don't need to do this part. Just reset it over and over and over and over. All right, I'm not even gonna kill that guy. He's such a wiener. So reset it and just go to town, okay? So go to town and start getting some slurpy slurps going on. Um, now he's dead. And now that guy's dead. Very good. And we're not even close to our full potential yet. So this is really, really good if you're in a party, by the way, because your party members actually get all the XP too. And they can sit in the middle of the map and actually reset it for you over and over and over super fast, way faster than you could do it, by the way. So it's actually a pretty good strat to have multiple, multiple people in here resetting for you. Uh, so you can just get so many, so many waves and that's how you get the insane XP. I'm still getting insane XP right now, but it's just, you, you take it to the next level by having people come in here and reset for you. Uh, an interesting strat is you can actually uh, multi-box yourself. And so for example, if I had two alt accounts, uh, I could have them come into my map here and they would just sit there and uh, they would slurp up a whole bunch of XP and they would be able to get, since we're, we have these, um, what's it called? These incubations on there. You could put incubators on your alt characters and they could be literally like super low level. They don't have to have finished the game or anything like that, right? Um, and you could also be leveling gems in them. You could have like, 16 empowers leveling through them or something like that and, and it takes about i think it's like 12 to 13 runs to do a a full level one to level four empower uh, and if you have two characters i think you can open up two clients per computer right so maybe you just have one client uh, extra as an alt account uh, and you can put all of his gems in uh, like in powers and you can even get a staff that has percent increased quality uh, and quality on the empowers the enlightens enhances actually make it where you can level those gems faster so I would suggest putting all of those in like a, a staff or a bow that has the that percent increased quality I think maybe the one-handers have it too I'd have to check on that 
Um, but as you can see, like, I am just absolutely blasting. And I'm actually not even doing this very efficiently because I'm talking to you guys. Um, typically, when I do this, it's, like, even faster and it's crazy. But as you guys can see, what are we at? We're at, you know, three, three and a quarter right now. And I finally actually just got one of the big haste buffs. So now I'm moving pretty fast. So let's see how much we can kind of get on this uh, run where I'm, I'm not playing the best. I, I bet we can at least still get four stacks of loot here. And one other pretty good thing that's kind of cool is on these runs, you can uh, get multiple timeless jewels. So I typically get anywhere from, I would say I typically get maybe four jewels. And sometimes you do get all five. You, you can't get more than the five because five is the cap because that's how many <clears throat> there actually are. Um, at least I think not. I've never gotten more than five. Um, but I get five actually quite a bit. And you could those Azanaf gloves that I got on that other map <clears throat> actually drop quite a bit in here. And if I am not correct, correct me, but I think you can actually drop a headhunter in here as well. I've obviously never done it because that's insane, but I'm pretty sure you can. <clears throat> and then, like I mentioned, just like hundreds. I have an entire quad stash tab of uh, incubators that I'm just popping constantly. So pretty, pretty cool. We got, what, 43 seconds here? Yep, so we already hit four, uh, four stacks of loot. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get that four and a half stacks. I hit five stacks one time and it was insane. I had so much loot. So much loot. I've gotten a whole bunch of pure exalt drops from this thing um, because you have those currency chests. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, what else can you get in here? You can get some. I had a, a pure Cheyula drop a couple runs ago. That was pretty nice. Those are worth a, a pretty penny. I've had some pure old Natoles drop, breach stones. Um, what else? You actually get a bunch of random six links. I've had a few chess pieces that are just like random six links that I've sold for multiple X each uh, Like unique ones And there we go. So we're done. So let's kind of check out the loot here uh, Lots of loot. Where's our uh, oh, no Do we not get uh, oh, there's one. So we got one jewel not the best It's uh, usually you get like four of course the time I record I only get one um, But I mean tons of loot, right? And I got a whole bunch of XP. I probably got maybe, what, 6% XP? 5%, 6% XP uh, doing that. And it took me, what, five minutes to do? Uh, and I'm level 97. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So a pretty good strat for for only uh, for not only making a decent bit of currency while doing this, but uh, also just kind of for, for getting a whole bunch of XP. And if you want to hit 100, this is absolutely a character you can do it on. So overall, I've had a lot of fun playing this build. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. It was a little bit more of an informal guide, a little bit different formatting. Uh, so let me know, by the way, if you guys like this versus not like it. I know I used to do a whole bunch of guides that were way more in depth. Um, it's kind of harder to do those now, and especially when it's a build like this that I'm not 100% sure how much interest is going to be out there because uh, it's you know kind of expensive build. So you let me get, you guys let me know if this kind of build interests you. Or if you guys would rather see like more cheaper builds, like maybe medium budget builds that can clear all the content in the game, but it's not, you know, like doing an absolute insane amount of damage, but you have to pay an insane amount of currency to, to get it. Uh, or do you guys like these builds that are, you know, pretty expensive, but can do just insane things in the game? Or do you prefer like, you know, league starter budget type situations? You guys let me know. I'll probably put up a poll on the channel. Uh, so maybe be looking out for that if you guys want. Um, but I think that's all I got on this one, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching this guide. Um, I will see you all in the next one, which actually should be a couple days. I have a new secret build. So I'll see you then. See you guys.